From Green Goblin to Venom, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man universe plays host to some of the most iconic members of Spider-Man's rogues gallery. However, the universe of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man is far more layered than it may seem just by watching the films. So join me as we go beyond the Raimi-verse to discover various adversaries that Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man would go on to face, just not on the big screen. This is Beyond the Raimi-verse. Welcome back everybody! Sorry it's been a while, got a little caught up in other things, but here I am. And today's episode is all about Felicia Hardy, aka the Black Cat, who made her very first appearance in The Amazing Spider-Man issue 194 in the summer of 1979, created by Marv Wolfman, Keith Pollard and David Cockerham. Walter Hardy, the father of Felicia Hardy, would operate under the facade of being a traveling salesman, but was actually a cat burglar. And before his arrest, he imbued onto his daughter Felicia to never settle for anything less than she feels like she wants. And this would all form the black cat persona for Felicia Hardy. She also develops a sense of kinship with Spider-Man, being one of the few men in the world that she can actually trust and Spider-Man and Black Cat both have different influences on each other. Black Cat is an anti-hero, someone to challenge the mild-mannered wallflower that is Peter Parker, someone with the potential to reshape what Spider-Man means. And when it comes to Spidey, she's done it all. She's been an enemy of Spider-Man, she's been a love interest of Spider-Man. But as well as all of that, she's also been a somewhat prevalent figure in the extended Raimi-verse. So buckle in, folks, and if you want to find out more about the Raimi-verse, we've got a whole series on this thing, so be sure to subscribe for just more like this. I would hugely appreciate it. On top of that, you can hit the like button as well to help Spider-Man content rise the ranks of the YouTube algorithm. And if you'd like to lend me a hand with getting this kind of content out there, that would be hugely appreciated. You can check out the Patreon link in the description below and make a monthly pledge. On top of helping me out, you also get some little goodies of your own, such as livestream replays and early audios. The journey of Black Cat in the Raimi-verse begins in Spider-Man 2 2004, specifically the main version of the game, which would launch on PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube. These two first cross paths when Peter attempts to stop an art gallery robbing, only to find himself chasing down Black Cat, someone who's a little bit more morally ambiguous than he is. And all the same, he finds her pretty alluring. However, their connection here never becomes outright romantic. This is actually a nice sort of middle ground for the Black Cat character. She's not a total enemy of Spider-Man, but at the same time, she's not an outright love interest either. However, if they wanted to do that, now was kind of an ideal time to do so. They found a really good place to put Black Cat into Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man story. Peter isn't actually with MJ for the most part of Spider-Man 2, which makes that sort of love triangle so much more palatable. Bottom line, I don't want to see Spider-Man commit adultery. The subject of adultery is something where I feel the Raimi films did dip their toes a little too far into, particularly with Mary Jane, but even with Peter to a small extent. So I am glad that this game actually managed to steer clear of Peter actually cheating on MJ. Not only that, but this also takes place at a time when MJ actually gets engaged to John Jameson, so it kind of feels like that's a dead end. Making not only Black Cat more alluring as a person, her philosophy more alluring as well, it's also a whole lot easier for myself as an audience member to get behind. As Black Cat gets to know Spider-Man a little better, she comes to realize that this guy is miserable. For the same reasons that he is miserable in Spider-Man 2 the movie. Being Spider-Man is making it impossible for him to actually commit to being Peter Parker as well meaning that it's impossible for him to commit to Mary Jane, meaning that it's impossible for him to commit to his friends and family. His Peter Parker life is in shambles in Spider-Man 2, so Black Cat offers a counter option. If Spider-Man is the one thing that stands in the way of being Peter Parker, why not commit to being Spider-Man? Leave it all behind! MJ's moved on, Harry doesn't really like you for you. All you do is let Aunt May down. Jeez, this is starting to sound like a suicide subplot. 
but basically put Peter Parker to the wayside, just be Spider-Man. This is something that wouldn't have been possible in the films because he was losing his powers at this point. However, that's not an aspect of the game, and that's partly because web-swinging mechanics are the core part of this game. You take that away, and it's not a lot of fun. And from this point, Black Cat also kind of takes on the role of an informant for Spider-Man, kind of telling him where all the big crimes are going down, where all the big weapons deals are going down. We already kind of covered quite a lot of that last time with the whole Shocker story. So I don't intend on getting too stuck in the weeds there. Just check out that video, and you'll kind of know how this works. Bottom line, though Spider-Man and Black Cat are two very different kind of heroes. She's kind of a hero when she feels like it, but she mostly just enjoys being this sort of wild animal in New York City. And she firmly believes that Peter would probably be a happier person if he took on that kind of lifestyle too. But there is of course the matter of Uncle Ben, his wishes, with great power coming great responsibility. And Peter does kind of touch on that, but Black Cat does make a compelling case, saying that What's done is done, the past in the past. You've got to kind of take your life now, take control of it, go where you want to go. But it's when they try and stop a weapons deal and Black Cat acts irresponsibly that Peter starts to reevaluate things. He does a little soul searching and realizes, nah, he feels like he owes it to like Aunt May and Harry Osborne and MJ to still be Peter Parker, to still be there for them. And he starts to believe that maybe there is some balance that can be struck between Spider-Man and Peter Parker. So Spider-Man goes to put a stop to this little arrangement that he has with Black Cat, and the two agree to just stay friends. But once I cross your path, I'm not so easy to get rid of. And then she was never seen again. Well, at least not in this version of the continuity anyway. But she did get a hauntingly terrible action figure with the Spider-Man 3 line of toys, so I guess there's that. I'm not 100% sure if it's based on this version or not. I don't really know what it's based on, it's kind of just... It's not very good, is it? While Spider-Man 3 did not include any Black Cat appearances, we did get a Black Cat appearance in Spider-Man Friend or Foe, which released the same year. And yeah, there is some debate as to whether or not this is the Raimi-verse, whether it's just squatting in Sam Raimi's house. I mean, you can argue that all of these are just squatting in Raimi's house. It uses the Raimi designs and kind of picks and chooses what continuity it wants to take from the Raimi films, but like... Yeah, nah. And uh, this also doesn't follow up from Spider-Man 2, the game, or any of those games either. Look, it's called Beyond the Rainyverse for a reason, not further inside the- anyway, shut up! I think including Black Cat in the black suit story of Spider-Man 3, the game, would have been kind of a no-brainer, but Spider-Man 3, the game, never actually split Peter and MJ up. At least, not anywhere near as substantially as Spider-Man 3, the movie did. Which is where she could slot in, but I guess in the game there's not that kind of space. I think it would be kind of cool if Peter kind of tried to come back into the fold in that regard with the black suit and Black Cat kind of realized, Jesus Christ, you're kind of a jackass when you wear this suit, aren't you? Oftentimes Black Cat is portrayed as kind of taking advantage of the black suited Spider-Man, but like, I feel like Spider-Man 2's Black Cat definitely wouldn't put up with his shtick. She's a much more balanced character in general. Anyways, moving over into Spider-Man Friend or Foe. Black Cat is an operative working under S.H.I.E.L.D. and Nick Fury, currently in Tokyo investigating the Meteor Shard, and Spider-Man is sent in to assist. And from there, after some playful back and forth, the two become allies and she can fight alongside you and join your character roster. And that's it. Yeah, don't expect any, like, major storytelling or anything going on in Spider-Man Friend or Foe. This was like a kid's cereal box game, effectively. And no, these two did not remember each other. Not only that, but Peter just wants to get with her from the get-go upon just seeing what she looks like. He loves her. Yet, it's implied that he has a girlfriend by the end of it. Presumably MJ? <laughs> Well, our journey with Raimi vs. Black Cat doesn't end here either, as Felicia Hardy very nearly made it to the Spider-Man film franchise as well in Spider-Man 4. So Felicia Hardy would be a new co-worker of Peter's at Citicorp. A new co-worker who he develops feelings for. Ah. This, of course, throws his relationship with MJ into turmoil, and uh, presumably he seems to cheat on her as well, as seen in a storyboard where he appears to be kissing her. <laughs> Let me tell you why this would have been a terrible, terrible idea. Peter acted like kind of a jackass in Spider-Man 3, and he kind of had to overcome that, and with Spider-Man 4, I'd definitely like to see him actually overcome that, be a better person. And so much of it was easily pinned on the whole black suit influencing him stuff, but here there's no black suit. So now we got Peter Parker, a guy who smooched another girl in front of MJ, 
Okay, really, really pushing it there. A guy who hit her while under the influence. Okay, not sounding good at all. And now that he's kind of come back from all that, he's going to cheat on her? <laughs> Now, I get that in the real world, there's a lot of different reasons why people might cheat, and it often comes from a place of vulnerability, but it's still an action that I ultimately don't respect, and I do not want to see my childhood heroes do it. Now, of course, as we know, Peter would also be battling it out with the Vulture at this time as well. And in the animatic I showed off last episode, we did also see the Vulture effectively dying while in battle with Spider-Man, which Felicia Hardy witnesses. Now, plot twist. Felicia Hardy is the daughter of Adrian Toomes, aka the Vulture. And upon seeing this and blaming her father's death onto Peter, she goes out for revenge as the Vultress. Yeah, is, is that what you wanted to see? Not Black Cat, but the Vultress. So it's basically Spider-Man 3 again, effectively. We got someone avenging their father and uh, Peter and MJ's relationship going to part. Except now it's with characters that we don't know as well and therefore don't have the same connection with. Now, while it certainly seemed that this was how the film was shaping up to be, it is worth remembering that Sam Raimi was very unhappy with the state of the script at the time that Spider-Man 4 got cancelled, asking for delays to rework it. And as I said in the previous video, he has come out and also said that they were focusing more on Kraven the Hunter and Mysterio as the main villains of this film shortly before production ended. So if a Spider-Man 4 were to come along today, chances are it wouldn't be like this. And also it is implied that this story probably didn't take course in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man universe, as it is stated that Peter and MJ are still, in some ways, together in Spider-Man No Way Home. Whereas the current understanding of Spider-Man 4 would have been that Mary Jane would have buggered off to LA to pursue an acting career, with Peter and MJ's relationship being firmly put to bed. But yeah, if this was the way that Spider-Man 4 was going to shape up, I'm pretty glad they put a pin in it when they did. Granted, I'm still hoping that Sam Raimi gets another chance to direct a Spider-Man film. I guess fate will take its course. Now, Black Cat, or... <laughs> Felicia Hardy or Voltress, whoever she was going to go on to be uh, in Spider-Man 4, would have been portrayed by Anne Hathaway, which is quite a coincidence as Anne Hathaway would go on to play a very similar character in The Dark Knight Rises as Catwoman. But that's not where the funny similarities end either, as, of course, Liz Allen was the love interest of Peter Parker in Spider-Man Homecoming, and Adrian Toomes just so happened to be her father as well. Of course, she didn't become the Vultress, and there was no love affair going on either, so Spider-Man Homecoming was in many ways Spider-Man 4, with all of the awful stuff cut out. So, that's it for Black Cat. In the Sam Raimi universe, anyway. I think her best story was definitely that of Spider-Man 2, the game. I thought that was very tasteful done. But I look forward to hearing what you guys think in the comments below. There's plenty more of this series still to come. Who do you think I'm going to cover next? Comment below and place your bets. And until the next time. Looks like you're done now. Go outside and play. So what do you guys think? If you enjoyed this video and you want to support more like it, be sure to hit that big beautiful subscribe button. And of course, in the description below are links to different social media feeds, including the Patreon. If you're feeling extra generous, like the following people. Who are Marcus Ward, Sirius the Skeptic, Biotin Arts, Mr. SP, David 20 Covers, Sergio, Shodin, Legendary Ray Ray, Adam Myers. Thank you guys, you are the best of the best. But as for the rest of you, thank you so much for watching guys, and have a great day. Look.